Hello and welcome to another edition of the Dinosaur News Center. We bring you the latest in research, discoveries, and other news relating to the world of dinosaurs. I'm your host, the Illiterate Scholar. In this edition of the Dinosaur News Center... Well, it's finally happened. Our first major conflict with news previously reported. I knew this was coming, but I didn't expect it so soon. Huh, hold on. Dinosaur News Center. Yes, this is the Illiterate Scholar. How may I help you? What? You want me to change the papyrus font? Oh, come on. It works well for my show. Oh, you're just exaggerating. It's not that bad. Oh, yeah? You and what army? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll change it. I'll change it. Just put the midget down. Yes, yes! And the rubber chicken. Put them both down. Yes, the car battery and the tub of butter, okay? I promise I'll change the font, alright? Yes, alright, thank you. Bye! Hey, how are you guys out there in the Flat Earth Society doing? Good? Are you still sore over the fact that we discovered the Earth revolves around the sun? Well, you better sit tight for this next piece of news. Because we just found dinosaur feathers in amber. Eleven of them. While we don't know what specific dinosaur these feathers belong to, a comparison with the fossilized feathers shows that these feathers did come from dinosaurs. Colors and pigmentation were preserved, but they're not exactly the most exciting colors. The colors just mainly range from brown and black. The structure on some of these feathers are very similar to the feathers of modern birds that are able to swim underwater. This is the first confirmation we have of dinosaurs living in Canada with feathers. Well, I hope the Flat Earth guys aren't going to try to protest this again by jumping off the edge of the planet. Archaeopteryx is now... a bird. Well, it's not like I didn't warn you guys ahead of time. I just didn't expect to see a counter-argument so soon. Unfortunately, I couldn't access the full paper and was only able to read the abstract, so I can't provide you with the full details. Just know that science has a habit of going back and forth. Duck season! Wabbit season! Wabbit season! Duck season! Fire! Whether it's a bird or a dinosaur, Archaeopteryx will always have a special place in Dinosaur News Center. The police stormed the Chicago Fuel Museum armed with lasers in pursuit of a dangerous suspect. After a deadly high-speed chase with speed reaching zero miles per hour, they finally cornered the suspect, Sue, the most complete Tyrannosaurus skeleton. So now we have a more accurate measurement of the animal's weight. Before, all dinosaur weight estimates were calculated using scaled models. But now we're using 3D laser scanners to measure the entire skeleton. The new weight measurements put Sue at at least 9 tons. So what does the cops have to do with this? The Chicago Police Department provided the laser surface scan for Sue. The Loyola University Medical Center provided scans of the individual bones. Bones that were too big to fit in medical CT scanners were sent to Ford Motors and Cubic Vision for scanning. Keep in mind that even though they provided us with a more accurate weight measurement for Tyrannosaurus, don't overlook the fact that this is a revolutionary new method in calculating the weight of all dinosaurs. We can now measure entire skeletons to figure out their weight. The laser scanners are accurate to less than half an inch for skeletons up to 40 feet. It does help that the Tyrannosaurus skeleton is very complete. And none of this would have been possible without the help of the Chicago Police Department. And then they arrested all the visitors at the museum for loitering. Here are a series of quick news that can be summed up in a sentence or two. New research into the size of Carnotaurus's caudal femoralis muscle suggests that it was a really fast predator. The caudal femoralis is attached to the upper leg bone of the Carnotaurus, and every time it flexes, it pulls the leg muscles back, giving it more power and speed. This is a fossilized mud imprint of a baby ankylosaur, named Propanolopasaurus marolandicus. This is the first time anything's been named based on a mud imprint of a juvenile specimen. If you were to ask me yesterday what I thought was the number one most incredible fossil discovery, I would have said the fighting dinosaur from Mongolia. You know, it's the one where the Velociraptor and Protoceratops were locked in combat and died together. If you asked me today, I would have said the fighting dinosaur of Montana, where a Tyrannosaurid and a brand new Chasmosaurine died together after a fight to the death. No, 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 not some kind of freaking accident that killed both of them. 
I mean they both killed each other and died next to each other. The evidence isn't 100%, but the possibility is very high. Both of them show pathology inflicted by each other. Oh, but it gets even better. This chasmosaurine is a brand new genus and species never seen before, and it's as big as a triceratops. And the fossil is basically 100% complete. And the tyrannosaurid, believed to be a nanotyrannus, is in a similar condition. And to top it all off, we have skin impressions for both of them. This amazing discovery is also making me rethink my stance on Nanotyrannus being a juvenile tyrannosaur. You have to check this video out. What I've shown you does not do it justice. The link's in the description box, so you know where to look. 2011 is quite a year for our favorite feathered reptiles and entertainment. And Korea has decided to join in the fun by announcing the release of their title in U.S. shores. The mightiest ever Tarbosaurus will arrive in the U.S. on DVD, simply titled Tarbosaurus. From what little I know, this is not a documentary and meant to be more of a movie. It's about a young Tarbosaurus growing up and overcoming the odds to become one of the mightiest hunters. So there's very little science in there. No word on whether this movie will come out in other territories besides the U.S. Oh, and I also don't have a release date. Before you watch the next trailer, please answer this series of questions. Do you like cheesy 60s action spy flicks? Do you like plenty of sex and violence in your shows? Do you like stop motion dinosaurs? Do you like Nazis and Hitler? No, 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 that's not what I meant, that's not what I meant. Just, just roll the trailer, roll the trailer. Let's get straight to the biscuits. World War II. The Nazis are making their mark on Europe. Adolf Hitler wants to take the world and keep it all for himself. <laughs> Hitler's days are numbered because Danger 5 are on the case. Get your precious mouth away from me! You hit the wall! I hit a Nazi! Scouring the furthest corners of the globe to unravel Hitler's most sinister plans. Now it looks like Hitler is using the bullion winnings from his casino to rearm the entire German army with superior golden super weapons made of gold. Ilsa was married to Rommel. I've been married to things a lot scarier than Nazis, my friend. Marriage is a waste of time if you ask me. As long as this is intact, any organism as a crystal implant is completely under our control. And I lade the Alliierten gerne dazu ein, ihn hier so weit unten zu finden. Well, I guess you have no more mutants left for them to fight. You may as well pardon them. Oh, I'll pardon them. I'll pardon them each in the face with my gun. Wait! Don't! Гитлер император использует это место для зомбирования людей. Здесь они превращают их в солдат-роботов. Так это. Danger 5 is armed with a cast of powerful newcomers. David Ashby as Jackson. Aldo Mignone as Pierre. Sean James Murphy as Tucker. Natasha Ristich as Ilsa. Amanda Simons as Claire. And Carmen Rousseau as Adolf Hitler. For today, we have one of the easiest dinosaur names to remember, and the former champion of the shortest dinosaur name. Meet Mimi, species name Paravertebra, from the early Cretaceous Australia. It's one of the most primitive ankylosauria, and the classification for Mimi is still up in the air. At first, it was placed within the Nodosaurid family due to the lack of a tail club, and later it was thought to be a primitive ankylosaurid. It's also possible that it's a third family of armored dinosaur. At a little over 2 meters long, Mimi is far from the largest armored dinosaur, but it was built like a fortress, complete with stomach armor. There are also bony rods running down along the spine. These bony rods are thought to help ease the strain on its back as the animal ran. We also have clear evidence of this animal's diet. Found within its abdominal cavity were fruiting bodies and seeds, which were apparently swallowed whole. 
along with broken down fibrous plant tissue, showing evidence that it was able to chew its food. Alright, it's time to answer a few questions from the viewers. Huey Lewis asks, What are your thoughts on March of the Dinosaurs? Did Gorgosaurus really have feathers, or were they added just to make it look cool? Yeah, I saw that special, and I might do a review of it in a future episode, but for now, I can tell you that eh, I'm not really all that impressed with it. As for feathers on Gorgosaurus, that's kind of hard to say. There are some bits of Tyrannosaur T found in Alaska. If it did live there all year long, chances are it did have feathers to help it keep warm. What's interesting about Alaska is there's a recent study on hadrosaur poop and how the amount of hadrosaur waste released enough gases into the atmosphere to keep Alaska much warmer than we thought. But I don't know if it's warm enough for feathers to be essential. Level Up Leo asks, What is the earliest and latest dinosaur fossils we've found? In terms of when they were fossilized, not when they were found. For the latest, that's easy. It would have to be the Triceratops we covered in episode 12. As for the earliest, that's kind of hard to say since the dating process is not very accurate. But it should be Eoraptor. Henteskeg95 asks, Which sauropod is smaller, Europasaurus or Magyarosaurus? I believe Magyarosaurus is smaller by a meter or so. And that about wraps it up for this edition of the Dinosaur News Center. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer on this show, please use the email below or at the end of the credits. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook now. Until next time, this is the Illiterate Scholar, signing off. Harry Wang's Big Dirty Kitchen.